Hello traders, this is John Kicklider, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com. For today's strategy video, I've been inspired to our topic uh, by some very uh, prominent headlines over the past 24 hours. It is in essence a discussion about how we need to be a little bit more mindful of protecting ourselves in uh, sudden changes in political tack or if you will uh, updates uh, related to trade and, uh, and the markets that we like to trade in. Um, the more prominent developments that we had just over the past 24 hours, uh, noteworthy for us FX traders, was a remark from Donald Trump in a uh, interview that he gave with the Journal that suggested that uh, the dollar was too high. Now, that uh, as a loose uh, explanation or uh, sentiment is under normal circumstances not a particular concern but as we've seen from the greenback and from many other many other markets out there uh, that his views and the subsequent policy that they uh, threatened to follow up with uh, has been a primary motivator for a lot of the volatility that we've seen, in, at least in terms of price swings, if not implied volatility measures, uh, over the past couple of months, at least since the election. We saw from the dollar uh, from the election outcome day uh, that there has been a very impressive uh, advance from the greenback. Uh, we also had seen from the S&P 500 that uh, there was a very impressive extension of the record-breaking run, now just shy of 2275. Uh, this clearly has a lot to do with the policies uh, which were promised in his platform during the campaign trail and subsequently that have been reiterated ever since, but we've seen also the uh, pullback or at least the lack of detail from uh, some of these uh, finer uh, drivers have also encouraged some pullback more notably on the dollar. Well in this past session uh, we have seen the dollars become more of the target. Swinging his gaze from individual equities, uh, President-elect Donald Trump had suggested that the dollar is too strong, uh, notably uh, taking into his assessment that uh, the Chinese yuan continues to drop aggressively, uh, but the the crux of the argument is that the dollar is too strong, yet he, his views, or at least his policies, if not indirectly, were uh, playing a very big role in lifting the dollar. Uh, it would be through uh, a more uh, circuitous uh, route, uh, in essence, the fiscal policies and the tax cuts, would, would, which would have suggested stronger economic growth in the United States versus its global counterparts, erection of trade barriers, which would uh, confer a concentration of strength in local assets, uh, but also inflation through things like border taxes, or uh, now it seems potentially tariffs, uh, and that in turn would uh, hasten rate hikes. Well, once again, another favorable view for the U.S. dollar. Uh, but if his interest or his views shift to the dollar being too strong, it's not clear that he would actually change the policies that have motivated this particular move, but he could double down on other efforts that would attempt to uh, both pursue those previous discussed uh, uh, efforts or policy projections and also attempt to neutralize the dollar influence. Can that really be effective? Eh, I'm dubious of the ability to control, have that much control unless we're going to more of a uh, command economy and uh, influence over exchange rates kind of like China has or had in the past. But it nevertheless can cause a lot of volatility. So what I want us to be more mindful of and create some strategy for is to better uh, keep tabs on these kind of influences. I consider them political influences. And generally, as uh, traders, we, we haven't had to look at too much of this in the past. Uh, there was a somewhat decorum, unspoken mostly, uh, when it came from global exchange rates. And when we would see something that was more explicit, the yen, for example, when there was a suggestion that they were directly intervening on behalf of the uh, exchange rate, uh, Japanese officials making that claim, they quickly backtracked because there was backlash from the G7, G10. Uh, 
I don't think that we're being as politically correct nowadays, and it's not just the U.S. that is taking this tack. It is also uh, other global players, uh, very uh, prominent at the ongoing uh, Davos conver uh, conversations, also considered the uh, world financial um, sorry, I mean, World Economic Forum, uh, the, we've seen a lot of discussion from China and how uh, China is uh, being uh, or is jumping to the leadership of the globalization uh, view. Uh, I think that's a, a long stretch. Uh, but nevertheless, the implications of trade and trade wars, especially as uh, Donald Trump is seemingly pivoting away from a border tax into uh, the support of tariffs, uh, that certainly can become a greater and greater risk. As these policies are promoted and implemented, it is more likely to generate reactions from trade counterparts and thereby further create problems uh, for global capital markets, volatility globally, and uh, we need to do, we certainly need to keep good tabs on volatility across the entire uh, uh, global economy, but also across different uh, asset classes, uh, and it creates specific high points of risk for various uh, currencies and currency crosses. The dollar is obviously one of the more uh, prominent uh, at-risk currencies uh, going forward with these kind of unknowns. Uh, it, it seems that uh, President-elect Donald Trump is going to go the route of using Twitter as his preferred medium for delivering a lot of policy updates. Now, of course, these policy updates aren't fully fleshed out. They aren't necessarily even going to Congress for approval or for feedback. Uh, but nevertheless, it has that impact. It can move the market. It can motivate speculators, even though it is a tentative step, an early step uh, in what is a longer process. So we can't write off the volatility that this generates because ultimately it is market participants that set price and subsequently they can be very responsive merely to threats just like they they have been very responsive uh, to threats from like the brexit considerations have we seen a worst case scenario play out in the divorce between the uk and the european union no but we have seen a tremendous depreciation of the British pound in anticipation. That's speculative in, uh, expectation. And it certainly has discounted the sterling to a severe level, uh, but actually living up to it, uh, we haven't seen that yet. And even this past session was evidence that perhaps we've gone a little bit too far. But nevertheless, how market participants position can lead to significant market reaction. Another one, uh, China, which I mentioned uh, is uh, a very clear high profile topic, and especially with the Chinese president speaking and a number of engagements there, uh, their potential uh, response to any kind of perceived uh, volley in a trade war from the incoming U.S. president. Uh, this leads to clear concerns when it comes to the U.S. DCNH exchange rate. Uh, this has been a primary focus, uh, or a, at least a favorite focus, of unfair trade uh, practices uh, with the U.S. and its trade partners. And subsequently, the response from Chinese officials is to be more retaliatory, especially if it is uh, something more outright uh, aggressive, like tariffs. All right, so uh, if you're trading anything USDCNH uh, related, much less anything dollar, uh, you have to be very cautious of what this threat uh, can mean, what this unknown uh, sudden update from a fundamental perspective can do to the market. So how to prepare for this? Well, one of the best means of actually being prepared and the easiest is actually just seeing what's on the docket. Uh, we know we have a number of speeches at the WEC uh, in Davos to talk about a variety of things. And yes, we do have further discussions with China and China's position in the global market. Uh, the Chinese president is also set to s speak at a number of further events. Uh, so take stock of those, see when they're going to be released, and subsequently see what impact it might have as any kind of policy suggestions are uh, floated. Uh, we also need to keep 
close tabs on uh, known speeches or events that uh, have to do with U.S. policy officials, important policy officials. Noteworthy this week is U.S. President, uh, uh, President-elect Donald Trump's inauguration on Friday. Uh, this is not really a forum uh, for policy updates, but hey, uh, he could use it as such, and uh, it wouldn't necessarily be too big of a surprise. So knowing when these events are on the docket is going to be very important. Uh, we can also see when some of his uh, cabinet uh, members and cabinet nominees are set to uh, discuss on his behalf or his group's behalf, or uh, to face Congress uh, for uh, their grilling to see if they're going to be uh, passed. These are also opportunities to see what uh, the uh, the cabinet, or sorry, the uh, president's uh, uh, workers are going to promote in terms of policy. Now, unfortunately, there is also a uh, impromptu and very difficult to track component here. Uh, there is a high probability that uh, many of the updates that we are going to get are not on the docket. These surprises, like purely the suggestion from Donald Trump that the U.S. dollar is too high. Uh, events like this are not scheduled. Uh, we can predict that it might come up, but we don't know when and when it's going to be a motivation for the markets. So the best means for us to keep track of this, keep tabs on it, is essentially to open a Twitter account. If that is going to be the preferred method of policy delivery from the incoming U.S. president, then it behooves us to actually get involved. Uh, there are ways of keeping tabs on uh, updates that come out, push alerts and such. You can get really complicated with it, or you can just uh, start a, uh, a social media account and actually follow him uh, as he is very active on his personal account. Uh, now. This might seem uh, unnecessary, and uh, it seems like we shouldn't have to do it, especially for those that don't want to get uh, too engaged in the uh, the newfangled uh, technologies. But in reality, uh, if it can move the market, we need to be aware of it. We need to be educated on it. We need, ha we need to have a plan for it. And this is definitely proving to be the case uh, going forward, especially as uh, trade uh, scuffles arise and uh, policies become more combative across borders. We need to be aware for this, uh, not just from individual shares perspectives, as we've seen in previous weeks and months. Uh, we've uh, we've had strong reactions to particular uh, companies that have been called out, but we also need to be clearly very uh, mindful of what it can do to exchange rates. Previously, it was only the dollar peso. Uh, and then it uh, it translated into the dollar CNH. But now it seems that we have to look at even the most liquid of the outlets, like the dollar itself, because we can have some significant movement uh, through this channel. All right, so uh, time to make an adjustment. This is the world that we live in, and these are the markets that, uh, how the markets are moving. Uh, and just like when risk trends wax or wane, when monetary policy is a motivator and not a motivator, we just have to make those adjustments because that is the reality and the state of our markets. All right, we'll wrap it up here. We'll do our next strategy video tomorrow. Until then, I wish you good luck trading out there.